Hello everyone, NatLabs here. Today we're going to be learning how we can make this simple horror theme or a simple horror room in the Godot game engine, version 3.3 .3 stable. And um, as you can notice, if I just walk around, I forgot which side it's on, but if I go to... You can see that now there's a red ball over there and there's another red ball, scary. And uh, basically there's nothing at the end. And I'm just gonna be showing how you can make something like that. So it's, it's kind of subtle, but I know a lot of horror games do it. So you can see that there's like nothing here. This is the center of the room, right? And if I go to this side, right? The red ball doesn't appear. But if I go to this side, wait for that noise that I just recorded like three minutes ago to play. And then you can see that the room changed. Like, whoa, the room changed. Um, a lot of horror games put this in their game where like if you go to one side like over here sorry um this is just a simple 3d character that i have with like a dash mechanic but um you can see over here when i go over here the room is like permanently changed and you can put another one another one of these uh detector areas over there on the other side and then it will change i'm just going to be quickly going over how you can do that so it's actually really simple like i thought it would be really complicated it's it's not it's a little bit more tedious than i would like to have imagined to make something like this you you just simply need a room and for your room you can have like a mesh instance uh, over here I, I put a little texture over it um of just like a wood floor which i got from cco textures of a wood um wood 062 if you were wondering and um over here i have like i just set the size to be like some sort of long room and i just uh, flipped the faces of the box as you can see over here in the preview and over here in the actual scene you can see that i can see inside the box so um, if I go inside the box, I can still see stuff, but I can't see outside. But when I go outside the box, I can see inside. And uh, that's uh, important for making a room. Otherwise, you would be piecing together like six rectangles. So you can just flip the faces of that mesh. I went up here to create a tri-mesh static body. And basically that uh, automatically puts a collision shape around the entire box. Just on the outside though, so I can still walk on the inside. As you saw, like that was a demo. And over here I have room 2 where everything's the same except I have a mesh instance here in the center which is just a red ball which you saw at the beginning of the video. And we have another red ball just to like be scary or whatever. Like just a simple like put whatever you want over there that just for my example I put like these two red balls and uh, that's basically what I put I with like a red light over there. And you can see that there's no area 2D. And that's because I thought it would be a good idea to handle everything in the world that you're currently in. You can see that we start off with room 1 but over there on the left we have this blue collision shape and basically that's a switcher node or like a uh, uh, just an area it's literally just an area if I go open documentation just area it's just uh, defined by this collision shape which is just a sphere with radius 13.7 or you can do whatever you basically what you want to say is when you get the area to like if I just connect the signal right uh, I could either go up here but uh, you can also connect a signal like this so on the body entered signal we can do switch to room 2 and this was where uh, custom signals can come in really handy because you can see over here if i just did something like this uh, body entered right and i have on switcher body entered that doesn't that doesn't tell me anything but over here we have a switcher which is the name of the area uh, on switcher body entered we're going to switch to room 2 and if our body is in group player, right, because let's say you have some, I don't know, bullets or something or some other entities in the world. Let's say you have some other entities in the world and maybe you don't want it to act. You don't want that other entity to activate something. Well, you can easily just go to your player and give it a group of player and say when the player enters this area, this area over here, make sure you uh, switch the world. And how do you switch the world or the room? Well, basically, I said room Q free and then quickly Godot will just add room two, which is just the second room with the red spheres in there, just to make it scary. And uh, we're basically going to be adding the child. And then over here, I have collision shape disabled because you don't want it to keep happening. And on top of that, if I didn't disable this, something really weird would happen. Oh, I Ah, okay, I know what happened. I, I, I think I forgot to leave flip faces on, so that's why nothing was showing up. Uh, so now you can see we're back in the room. And if I, and right now I have a, I have a, this line disabled, so I'm just going to control it to save. If I go over here, no, it's on the other side. If I go over here, right, you can see the red ball appears. But if I go back, error, because room one doesn't exist anymore, right? We Q-freed it, which means you can see that Q-free over here, just the documentation says it gets the node ready for deletion and basically deletes it because 99% of the time it will be available or ready for deletion. And so after we get rid of it, you want to make sure you disable your collision shape because you don't want to have this error show up in your game where your game just becomes unplayable. Uh, so also over here, we just have shuffling objects, which is just a simple away file or just a simple audio file I recorded. And you can, you hear that it sounds a lot more different 
when I play it in the inspector, but uh, when I go over here to the actual uh, shuffling object audio player, it's over here on the other side of the room. But the player will be activating the noise from here. So you can just get a rough sense of how it will sound by just lining up your, your camera. So right now the camera is over here. You can just go over here like by clicking, right clicking and just moving like WASD into this area and clicking play. So you can hear like it's kind of it's like kind of muffled or quiet. If I just left the unit dB, which is how loud it will be to zero. You can just barely hear it if you max out your volume, but I wouldn't want you to do that. So you can just see that just playing around with the values or if I increase it really loudly, then it's like a lot more scary. It sounds like something's right behind me. Just a couple more tips to adding a little bit more horror flair to your horror game. Just make sure that when you could see that uh, I could see that the room spawned in that, and that's because uh, or the second room spawned in or whatever it was in the second room spawned in. Um, uh, I could I could see that because I was able to turn around. So if I just head over here, uh, I just have to move this back a bit. And now you can see that uh, even with my back turned, it's not obvious that the room was switched and you can go back and you can see that the, the room technically switched. Like this is a totally different room, but since literally everything remained the same, the mesh, the body, everything stayed the same, it's a lot harder for me to detect that. And if you see, if I just move this um, room just a little bit over and then I go over here, you can see that there was some sort of glitch or stutter. And now, yeah, we ha we have the second room, but there was still a little bit of a glitch and a stutter. So you want to make sure that you get everything like pixel perfect and make sure nothing is obvious that the room switch because that kind of distracts the player and uh, loses the uh, horror vibe that you're going for. If you're making a horror game, that is. I guess I could quickly go over the camera controller. I mean, uh, this is just a very simple uh, uh, script for a camera system, a 3D FPS player. I will be doing a tutorial about that later uh, because I feel like that's its own big a can of worms to open but basically uh that concludes this a uh, very simple uh, smooth transition uh for a horror game uh like how to put a very simple smooth transition in a horror game to a different world or different room you can see that the room has changed now and the room has changed or you can like put some other things and that's basically all i wanted to cover because i was trying to play around with it and i thought it would be really complex it wasn't so i thought i would make a tutorial to help someone out and yeah that's the end of this video have an amazing day Hi, sorry about that. Uh, video's not over. Just a really quick uh, second demo of this because I, I thought using the lights in the room was a bad example. Uh, so now you can see over here, we have this red light and on the red light side, uh, there's nothing here. Like it's it's wall as far as we can see. And over here on this other side, we have the collision shape that the text and the red light's still there. But oh my God, such wow. Look, uh, a, a new room S1. So that's a better way to do it. I mean, uh, before there was no, uh, there, there was no extra room, but over here uh, when we went here, uh, a noise played and then we would our attention was diverted over here and now you can see that there's a room here uh, the way i did this is i quickly hopped into blender and i literally went and i ex like i used the knife tool like i click k um made a cut clicked enter to make that cut but whatever uh, so i i basically made this like long rectangle i i made that cut and i exported the project so i exported uh this one uh so it would be room three which is just literally a a long rectangle as you can see over here just a long rectangle and then if i control shift z go backwards uh, of course i lost the extrude but you can see over here if you click e to extrude you can extrude that face and you can create an l-shape sort of structure and um that's essentially what room um room two or four is uh depending on what you want to call it because um i had room one and two from the previous like the first set like the first time i recorded this then i quickly went in and made room three and four and you can see over here it's just an l-shape to give that like extra room and just make sure that you when you're making your mesh i guess this is kind of a hacky way but make sure that you can actually see that this is um an empty room like you can actually see if i click alt z like there is an emptiness to this room like there is a there's a there's not a face there is the correct word i want to say um i'm still like learning to navigate in blender so this is not probably this is probably not the best way to navigate but you can see over here that there's no face and i'm trying to reiterate the fact that if you were just able to select all of these and click f to make a face then there would actually be a wall there and godot would put a static body there and wouldn't allow you to pass that but over here as you can see if i just get rid of it then there's no face and you can have uh, some like tunnel system or, or just an extra room that pops up when you uh uh, go to the other side and I know it's moving really quickly. It's because I uh, took this uh, I basically took this uh, uh, Movement script from a, a 3d doom clone So obviously you can tell I was going to be moving fast there But I don't need to move fast in a horror game But this is just a simple uh, way to get your horror game to have like dynamic 3d rooms I guess and if that's something you want which I 
I've learned is pretty scary and pretty mind-boggling, as hence the name of the title of the project. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Have an amazing day. Let's say you have some other Everett, for, which is just the second room with the red. If you just control click it, you see cues and nude. Wow, that was really bad.